All right, I will call this uh, meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dodge. Here. Commissioner Lieberman. Here. Commissioner Rice. Here. Let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, our first order of business is mighty important. We are um, celebrating uh, one of our uh, best who has is retiring, and Joyce Carter, uh, would you please just come up here? We, I want to, uh, we're going to have the proclamation for you in just a few moments, but I'm going to read it, and then each of us can make comments, and we'll get pictures and all kinds of stuff, and we have a huge crowd because we're all here to celebrate uh, the difference you've made for Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. All right, so it truly is our great pleasure to honor you, Joyce, on the occasion of your retirement from Montgomery County after three and a half years. Uh, and we say this wholeheartedly, public service is a particularly notable career choice. And former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice said, there's no greater challenge and no greater honor than to be in public service. And I believe everyone in this room would totally agree with that statement. Um, Montgomery County has been committed to providing high quality services and benef that benefit all the residents of the county since its founding in 1803. You weren't here then, I'm not no, suggesting. No, no. <laughs> uh, but you began your career in December with us in 2018 and you started as the director of human resources you had earned a ba in liberal arts from the university of connecticut i did not know that mm -hmm. and the uh, master's in counseling and business from wright state university so we're both wright state grads mm -hmm. didn't know that um, you are a true public servant and i mean that uh, with every cell of my being i've witnessed it day in day out month in month out so that is the highest compliment that we can bestow upon you. Uh, you have been an incredibly valuable member of the Montgomery County team and this community. And whereas after nearly 15 years serving the citizens of our communities, we want to wish you, and we truly mean this, continued joy and happiness in preparing for your next phase of life. I know there's great, uh, you know, this is just the end of one chapter, but the beginning of a whole uh, another uh, chapter to celebrate. Mm -hmm. So on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners of Montgomery County, Ohio, on this 15th day of July, 2022, we do hereby recognize, honor, and congratulate you for your outstanding service to the citizens of Montgomery County we truly wish you much joy in the new life and opportunities that retirement will offer. And we absolutely say you have to keep in touch. Mm -hmm. You're not going away permanently, okay? We have to let us know all the good times and all the good things happening because you will be sorely missed by all of us for whom you have interacted. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So others, I know you yeah. want to chime in. Just, yeah. Commissioners, okay. Michael. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, thank you for the years you've been here, and no matter any kind of question I had or concern, I could call you just like that, and you, you had answers, or else you, you did research on it, and we really appreciate it. But you know what? I don't want to see any tears, because you're going to be holding little I babies know. here in just a <laughs> couple days. So good for you. Good for you. You're going to enjoy every moment of that. Joyce? It's hard to believe it was only three and a half years, huh? Yeah. I mean, I, we went through a lot in these last three and a half years, and um, you were part of the team. Michael, I know, appreciated you being part of the team and, and responding to emergency after emergency after emergency. You, yeah. you were there. And, um, you know, it's, um, we're, we're sad to see you go, but also happy for what you're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, I, and I said it to you this morning, I want to say it again publicly, we're very thankful that you have been a mentor uh, to our young women that are in our program. And, you know, 
that's so important. And for you to take the time to do that uh, means a lot. And so thank you. I doubt if we'll be able to get you next uh, next round, but who knows, right? I know. So thanks again. Thank you. And Mike. Well, I'll go last, Joyce. <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to tell you thank you. You have been a, a rock in uh, in my leadership team. And, uh, and you have led us through, from an HR standpoint, through some of the most difficult times in the county's history. And uh, especially the work that you've done during COVID. All of the different policies that came down from the federal government and from the state that had to be implemented. So from the bottom of my heart, and I consider you a friend, thank you. And, and from all of us in the administration, we all will miss you greatly, but we know we can just if we can interrupt little man, <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can call you and say, hey, Joyce, what do you think about that? Uh, your mentorship, uh, as Debbie mentioned, is huge, uh, not only from the young people, but from the rest of the team, and I think that's evident from the team that's here today. So HR team, would you stand up, please? Let's give a round of applause right, for Joyce. HR team. Three minutes? You, you can sure. have as much, you as, can you have as much time as you want. I don't need three minutes. I need to thank you all for your support, your constant support, especially Mr. Coker. It's been tremendous. It's been an opportunity of a lifetime to work with all of you and to work with all of you. I have a great team, and they're going to continue to carry on the good work. I wish you much continued success because you deserve it. You guys work very hard for this community and everything you do shows. And it's been an honor to work with you. So thank you, Joyce. Thank, thank, thank you, you, Joyce. Can Pictures? Yes, we're going to get photos. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad we don't have like a <laughs> fake proclamation. <laughs> Where do you want us to go? They want us up here. <clears throat> Come on up here. Okay. We're not until after for today. Okay. Oh, after? Okay. No pictures. Oh, Jen's go get pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay. We always roll with it. Delay the further celebration. All right, tough, <coughs> tough act to follow. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it county is. County engineer, I, but she left. I was going to say news. something too, but I'll say, oh, but I will. Okay. Say, well, I well, will wait say she comes back. Okay. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, she, Joyce and her staff have always been very helpful to us and to my office as well as a separate mm -hmm. elected official. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Okay. Are we ready? Yes, we yeah, are. My turn. Okay. Um, we have a number of resolutions for you today. Uh, the first is resolution 22-1092 to reject the bid for the 2022 pavement marking program for various county and township roads. 1093 is to set the date of August 2nd, 2022 for the viewing and August 9th, 2022 for the hearing for the Shoot Mill Road reconstruction project in Harrison Township. Uh, 1094 is to authorize a cost-sharing agreement with Washington Township for installation of a landscaping system at the Mad River Road, Alex Bell Road roundabout project in Washington Township. And then we have a couple of authorizations for LPA federal local wet project agreements with the Ohio Department of Transportation. 1095 is for Frederick Pike uh, re resurfacing project and 1096 is for the Mad River Road resurfacing project. Then we have uh, several purchase and acquisition of permanent and or temporary construction easement approvals. Uh, 1097 is for Astoria Road culvert replacement project in German Township. And 1098 is for the Airway Road bridge replacement project in the city of Riverside. And then finally, we have some resolutions for road closings. 1099 is Philadelphia Drive between Valerie Arms Drive and Garvin Road lasting approximately three days. 1100 is Philadelphia Drive between Valerie Arms Drive and West Nottingham Road, lasting approximately 10 days. And 1101 is for Manning Road between Broomershine Road and Anthony Road, lasting approximately six days. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 County Sheriff. Commissioners, before I go to the County Sheriff, Paul, did you want to say any comments no. with Joyce? Joyce, I was going to say. I, I said comments while you were gone, but, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I just said I, I thank you and your staff for the help you always give us as a separate elected office 
uh, whenever we need it. So I appreciate that, and, and congratulations. Enjoy retirement. Should we go ahead and do the pictures now, or the proclamation was there, right? Okay. Okay. We ha why don't we do that so that if the crowd doesn't want to stay for the whole thing? I can't imagine they don't want to. I stay. know it's hard to imagine, but uh, why don't we do that now? So Joyce, come up. I exactly. My, ch my area right here. Oh, okay. All right. I thought I was going to have to stand. Bye, HR team. <laughs> All right. Now we will go back to our agenda. County Sheriff. Thank you, Commissioners. Under the County Sheriff, we have Resolution 1102, authorizing an agreement with NeoGov for use of the Agency 360 Training Evaluation Program in an amount not to exceed 5,497 through April 30th, 2023. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Common Police Court. Under the Common Police Court, we have Resolution 1103, authorizing an agreement with Richardson Compensation Consulting, LLC, to provide compensation analysis services in an amount not to exceed 26,000 through November 30th, 2022. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Juvenile Court. Under Juvenile Court, we have Resolution 1104, adopt the budget based on a grant with the Ohio Department of Youth Services for the ongoing operation of the Center for Adolescent Services mm -hmm. in the amount of $5,006,893 through June 30th, 2023. We also have two authorization agreements, actually one, two, three, five authorization agreements, excuse me, for healthcare services for youth committed to the Center for Adolescent Services through June 30th, 2023. Resolution 1105, Michelle Schultz University Psychological Services Association in the amount not to exceed 22,380. Resolution 1106, South Community Inc. in an amount not to exceed 206,000. Resolution 1107, Dr. Dennis Bingham, in an amount not to exceed 30000 Resolution 1103, Johnny Williams Myers III, Physician Assistant Certified, in an amount not to exceed 14400 And Resolution 1109, ABC Therapies, in the amount not to exceed 200000 I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Treasurer's Office. Under the Treasurer's Office, we have Resolution 1110, authorizing the disbursement of funds from the Treasurer's Delinquent Tax and Assessment Collection, or DTAC fund, to the Montgomery County Land Reutilization Corporation in an amount not to exceed $1,817,912.94. I move to approve. Second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 And you know, I just want to comment that that's so important. It is. So I'm surprised you didn't jump right on that. Well, <laughs> I was going to say okay. something. Okay. Uh, and you know, a lot of counties have seen their DTEP go down and we have not thankfully um, experienced that yet because that gives us the funding for the land bank mm -hmm. to revitalize neighborhoods and uh, do the important work that it does. So uh, kudos to the treasurer's office for all their hard work and collection. Co commissioners, I'd also like to say thank you to you because you gave us the ability in the budget uh, to do an allocation with the treasurer so that we could send more money to the land bank. So uh, great job of our county treasurer, but also great job on, on you all and your leadership uh, doing the county budget process. So thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Turn it over to you, county administrator. Thank you, commissioners. County administrator, under the clerk's office, approve the minutes of the meetings on June 28th, 2022, resolution 1111, approval of bills, resolution 1112, approval of travel and expenses. Both of those lists are available in the clerk's office. Administrative services. Oh, oh, we move to approve. I, I got ahead of myself. I'm sorry. That's never happened before. No, it's okay. All right. Go, you said. And I seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 I do make mistakes. It's from okay. Time to time. We all do. All right. Administrative services. Good afternoon, commissioners. We have several resolutions for your approval today. Uh, the first is 1113. This is the approval of personnel actions. This list is available in the clerk's office. Uh, 1114 authorizes an agreement with Comfort Systems USA for technology controls, preventative maintenance for the facilities management department in an amount not to exceed $47,250 through December 31st of 2022. Uh, 1115 approves a Courthouse Square vendor's license agreement for rental space on Courthouse Square for the Wild Banana LLC through December 31st of 2022. 1116 amends the agreement with App Architecture for the Rybold Building Fourth Floor Public Defender Renovation Project by increasing the original amount by $10,725 for a revised total of $319,525. 1117 rejects the proposals for the Safety Management System Project for the Risk Safety and Emergency Management Department. Uh, 1118 solicits bids for the purchase of special waste hauling services for the Environmental Services Department. Uh, and 1119 requests proposals for the risk management consultant broker services for the risk safety and emergency management department. We also have one late item, which is 1143, and this approves the settlement agreement with uh, settlement agreement and release with the Rite Aid Corporation pursuant to the terms set forth in the settlement agreement. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Commissioners, I'd just like to say on 1143, I'd like to thank the county prosecutor and Ward and his team. Uh, I know they, they did an excellent job of working with mm -hmm. multiple councils to move this piece. So mm -hmm. thank you, Ward, and yeah. thank you to uh, Prosecutor Hatch. Michael, you want to explain what it is a little bit more? Well, actually, we have our council well, here. Yeah. So, Ward, why don't you go ahead and weigh in? Yes, Commissioners, uh, thank you. Um, we are, as you know, on behalf of uh, you all, we have filed multiple lawsuits against different parties involved in the opioid epidemic, um, along with multiple other jurisdictions. And we've been part of uh, certain settlements uh, most recently last year for the One Ohio settlement, of which I believe some money was just distributed it, yeah, uh, this, this week. week. Mm -hmm. um, also on behalf of you all, we filed um, lawsuits against the pharmacy defendants also for their participation uh, <coughs> in the opioid epidemic. And this is the first settlement um, that we've received in that latest round of litigation. That money, 1.25 million mi minus the, our costs, mm -hmm. um, will come directly to Montgomery County um, as opposed to being distributed throughout, throughout the state. Mm -hmm. And that's separate from the one Ohio mm -hmm. settlement. Yes, ma'am. Completely mm -hmm. separate. Yes, ma'am. Almost okay. directly to us. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Very good. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Environmental Services. <laughs> good afternoon, Commissioners. For Environmental Services, we have Resolution 1120, authorizing an agreement with Outdoor Enterprise LLC for construction of the RV dump station at their lowest and best bid of $190,899 through March 31st, 2023. 1121, approve the plan specifications and estimated cost of $8,500,000 and solicit bids for construction of the water facilities for the Eastern Regional Water Reclamation Facility Belt Filter Press Replacement Project. 1122, accept the subdividers contract from Divided Ridge Associates LTD for the Washington Trace Development Section 16. 1123, 
accept the easement deed for water lines through property belonging to Washington Square Land Development LLC for the development of the Dorothy Lane Market Water Main re Relocate and record the same. Following two or two amend agreements, 1124 with Strand and Associates for preparation of detailed construction plans and specifications and project management for the Habitat and Summit Med lift station replacement project by adding 82,000 to the original amount for a revised total of $331,800. And 1125 with Double J Construction Inc. for construction of the Centerville Station water main replacement project by adding $17,166.65 to the original amount for a revised total of $250,784.65. The next two are to authorize 100% releases of the performance bonds and subdividers contracts with MI Homes of Cincinnati LLC versus 1126 Windstone Development Section 4 and the next is 1127 Windstone Development Section 5 and the following four are to issue uh, renewed authorizations to discharge wastewater permits to significant industrial users discharging to the Western Regional Water Reclamation Facility. 1128 is with Clean Water Environmental, LLC. 1129 with Fuyao Glass America, Inc. 1130, Veolia ES Technical Solutions, LLC. And 1131, West Carrollton Paper, LLC. Commissioners, before you approve, uh, Matt, could you go over uh, 1120 so the commissioners uh, and the public can understand the benefit that this is gonna have, sure. especially for our, our public that likes to, to go camping. Sure. And then also the work that we're doing out at Eastern 1121. Sure. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, the first is with the RV dump station. As you remember, we had um, closure of the septic station on Dryden Road due to the aging infrastructure and the smart project. Uh, but we wanted to, and we could for, for a lot less of supply campers and RVs a solution uh, at our eastern location. So that'll be done later this year. And 1121 was for belt press filter. So I won't get into details, but uh, it's part of the waste, waste process. Um, those belt presses are 40 years old and they kind of compress the sludge so we can remove that and um, take it away. So it's, aging infrastructure that we need to take care of. We don't want to have problems with that. Thank Great. you, Matt. Thank you. Okay. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Okay. Tom. Um, good afternoon. Under the Department of Job and Family Services, um, Resolution 1132 will authorize a memorandum of understanding with the Dayton Metropolitan Housing Authority doing business to Greater Dayton Premier Management for the administration of the Housing and Urban Developments Family Unification Program through March 31st of 2027. 1133 is with Sunset Enterprises doing business as Open Line to provide background checks for, and multiple verifications for employment in an amount not to exceed $28,000 through December 31st of 2022. And then we have several um, Agreements for substitute care through March 31st of 2024. 1134 is with Cedar Crest Hospital and RTC. 1135, Village Behavioral Health. 1136 with Advantage Family Outreach and Foster Care. I also have a late item under Job and Family Services. It is 1145, which will authorize an agreement with Sinclair Community College to provide support to the Fast Forward Center under the Out of School Youth Initiative in an amount not to exceed $300,000 through June 30th of 2023. And then under Stillwater Center, Resolution 1137 will extend the price agreement with Maxim Healthcare Staffing Services for temporary nursing services through January 31st of 2023. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. Management and budget. John, do you have a late item? Yes, I do. Uh, thank you. I have uh, resolution 1144 to establish a special revenue fund, fund 210, sub fund 210001, known as the MC1 Ohio fund. Mm -hmm. 
John, you want to update the commissioners on the, some background on this? <coughs> yes. Um, as Ward has spoken, and uh, we are receiving this week, we've been given notification through CCAO that uh, the One Ohio Foundation will begin distributions this week uh, for uh, the first payment. This is the first payment of a scheduled 18 payments over the next several years. So this will be the first payment um, is required uh, by the Auditor of State that we set up a separate fund and subfund specifically for uh, tracking uh, our expenditures, uh, future expenditures for per the regulations of the memorandum of understanding that was uh, signed, I believe, back in April. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know they had some estimate amounts, but did we get the amount yet that we're getting? Yes, we did. It is. Um, uh, this first payment is four hundred and forty-six thousand. And that's just the first payment. That's right, the first right, payment. Right. Yeah. yeah. Supposedly the payments from what we have will be front loaded. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we think they'll kind of taper for the next off, seventeen yeah. after mm -hmm. this. Yeah. All right. Yep. Um, just to add that, um, then there is a state fund, and Commissioner Dodge is representing us at the it's state just, yeah. foundation, and so. The money will go to jurisdictions in Ohio, and then a, a ch big chunk of money, bigger, will go to the state of Ohio that then the foundation will distribute mm -hmm. out. And so we're still meeting with the... Trying to figure okay. that one trying out. To figure there are store, out. yes, more <laughs> yeah. details to be worked and I, out. And I do want to say I'm really thankful for award and, and actually county prosecutors across the whole state because there were no rules. Right. And had it not been for CCAO really digging into this and, and Rachel at CCAO, we'd still be like, well, what are we supposed to do? So um, we weren't the first state to uh, start distributing, but we were close to one of the first. So yeah. congratulations and thank you, Ward. And Commissioner Dodge will represent us well. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, she will. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, do we, yeah, all right. We already did. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Oh, I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, John. And Chris Williams, Business Services. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Under Business Services Workforce Development, we have Resolution 1138 authorizing work experience and guidance program agreements with various local businesses and under Community and Economic Development. Resolution 1139 approving an Economic Development Government Equity Edge Agreement with the City of Dayton for Infinity Labs LLC project in amount not to exceed $250,000 or 1.47% of the total project cost, whichever is less. 1140 authorizes an agreement with River Corridor Improvement Subdistrict of Miami Conservatory District for activities related to the Great Miami Riverway Coalition and annual amount not to exceed $22,000 through May 31st, 2027. 1141 amends the agreement with the City of Kettering to provide rental assistance to households impacted by COVID-19 by adding $850,000 to the original amount for a revised total of $4,450,000 and extending the term through March 31st, 2023. And lastly, 1142 publish a notice of public hearing to share the draft of Montgomery County fiscal year 2022 action plan to discuss performance of previously funded CDBG home and ESG projects to take public comments and submit the plan to HUD at the end of the comment period. Well, before I move, you know, the uh, Great Miami Riverway Coalition, that is just so great, and there's just getting to be so much excitement with going from, I think it's Sydney to Hamilton. It might even really be Piqua. I think it might go, all, it might be Piqua all the way down. Oh, okay. okay. It's gonna be great. Yeah. It really is. So, so. Or several. I'll second it, but there are several exciting things on here. Um, the 39, 1139, that Infinity Labs, mm -hmm. the building that they are going to rehab is is historical. It's the one that's right by uh, Channel 1416. Correct. And it's it's just been an eyesore for probably, I don't know, 30, 40 years. And they are going to go in there and just totally redo it. It's it's an exciting project. I've I've talked with the the people that are doing it, and it'll be great. And then the other one is I'm just so happy to see Michael. We've talked about this several times, but Kettering Courts really <laughs> taking the lead and coordinating all those dollars to keep people in their homes. Yeah. And Kettering Courts, which is more than just Kettering, you know, it's like five jurisdictions, I think, and 
they're, they are really making a difference. And so we, we thank Kettering uh, for that as well. You're absolutely right, commissioners. Uh, Kettering, Court, all of our providers have done a fantastic job. Uh, commissioners, you have taken the lead on rental assistance and put out more rental assistance, almost $18 million uh, <laughs> in rental assistance uh, throughout this period, throughout the county. So uh, all of our partners have done a great job. Kettering's leading on this. This is just fantastic to get this out to the public. Yeah, I mean, if you think about that, that's amazing. We have, mm -hmm. we have kept people mm -hmm. above water, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank goodness for the federal funds, but in this time of COVID and then now everything else escalating, the cost of rent's out of control, and um, this is good. So um, congratulations to all of us. Yes, Chris, you and the team, Tawana, great job this is leading this effort yeah, i know this has been a lot of work so thank you all you're welcome yep okay it's been uh, moved and seconded all those in favor say aye aye, aye. comments by citizens nancy <coughs> come forward you have state your name and address and you have three minutes this is our new area i like your new digs thank, thank you. you um my name is nancy keel uh, Address, did you say? 309 Hacker Road, Dayton, Ohio, 45415. Um, hello. hello. Good to Hi. see y'all. Um, I'm here uh, representing the Clergy Community Coalition, and um, I wanted to announce that on Monday, July 18th, we're holding a town hall meeting. Uh, guest speaker is uh, Premier's Michael Reardon, CEO Michael mm -hmm. Reardon, and um, we're asking, inviting everybody here, everybody on... Community, community TV um, to come to, to this, this um, event. It's uh, July 18th, which is this coming Monday, 6.30 at College Hill Community Church, 1547 Philadelphia Avenue in Dayton. And um, I'm gonna hand you these flyers if you want. Mm -hmm. And so I also, I kinda, I wanna read um, uh, what we wrote on the back of the flyers, just to share with you. Uh, who the Clergy Community Coalition is. Uh, we formed in response to the announced closure of uh, January uh, 2018 by Premier Health Partners of the closure and destruction of Good Samaritan Hospital, a two million square foot full service hospital that was a community anchor. The CCC responded with protests, community meetings, pressure on city, county, state officials, and the filing of a federal complaint with Health and Human Services Civil Rights Department which asserted that the planned closure and demolition of Good Samaritan Hospital would have a racially discriminatory impact and would strike a devastating blow to the health care of African Americans and women in, of Northwest Dayton. We were unable to prevent the closure and destruction of Good Samaritan Hospital, but we continue to work for a hospital and ask the question, why do white people get hospitals and black people get urgent cares? A gymnasium, outdoor sports field, weights training, competition pool, urgent care, goodwill um, are all what's being uh, presented to us by Premier right now. Then They're all great, but you can't have a baby in an urgent care and we can't save lives uh, without an emergency center. In addition to what Premier is providing <coughs> at the Northwest Health and Wellness Campus uh, is a medical center with emergency trauma, mental health, birthing center, um, out, outpatient um, obstetrics uh, and hospital beds to support this. Um, in addition to this, we also wrote a letter to Michael Reardon and we've, we asked community members to sign that and, uh, and we sent those to you. Unfortunately, you did not sign them and it was a great disappointment to us. We're asking that you would still strongly consider signing this letter, commissioners, um, and we would invite you to come on July 18th. You know, we, you're very welcome to come. So these, this is the letter to Michael Reardon, and uh, we'd very much like you to read it. It's a hard copy, and just to take your time, and, but, but it's on DocuSign, it's on your mail. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, Nancy. County Administrator. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, our Male and Female Leadership Academies teamed up to provide community service last mm -hmm. week, and it was pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, they went to the Dayton Food Bank, packed more than 200 uh, boxes of food for local families. Uh, the Leadership Academies and, and our mentor programs for young men and women between the ages of 14 and 16. 
and each teen is paired with a mentor that helps guide them and allows them to grow and to develop into our future leaders. So uh, this is a great program. You can find out more about the program at thejobcenter.org backslash youth. Again, thejobcenter.org backslash youth. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. And you know, those leadership academies, um, both the, the males now had like, is it two years? Yeah, two years. we're in year two. And Finishing then year two. we just attended, um, as you mentioned, the one-year um, graduation on Saturday. And, you know, all evidence shows that uh, when a, a young person, or really anybody, any age, if you have a mentor, uh, but especially young people, uh, the statistics just go way up of how um, what a difference it can make and the healthier, better choices that those young mm -hmm. people all make uh, by just having one person who believes in them and that they can um, really bounce ideas off of. So uh, we were really thrilled to see it be expanded to females as well. And um, I have to say that they uh, selected an individual who was one of the mentors whose own life story quite inspiring, who gave the keynote address. Mm -hmm. And uh, her remarks were quite compelling, I think. Uh, you know, she's lived this. And um, her daughter was also in the program. So it, w it was a very special. Inspiring. Mm -hmm. Very special. You say that a lot, but um, some really stand out. And um, I just think that she's a living example of what we are trying to um, really facilitate and boost and increase the likelihood of uh, our young men and women, regardless of zip code or regardless of circumstances, to have a chance to be their best selves. And you know, there, you know, I am serve as a mentor in College Promise, and I think as a community, we're extremely fortunate. I mean, I think we've really added to the portfolio of uh, uh, leadership. Uh, type of programs for young people. Um, I don't think you, I really don't think, given the needs of our community, we could ever have too many. Mm -hmm. But I think our um, hats off to uh, the whole team. Mm -hmm. uh, they just do a stellar job from mm -hmm. the get go. Mm -hmm. And uh, they instill in the young people, and I can say the young men, you know, they show up for each other. Uh, they, they really, you know, it's about dress and all of that, of mm -hmm. how you change that perception and you live up to what you're dressed like and they look sharp and they um, are motivated. And I, th I think we are changing lives and it'll mm -hmm. take years from now to be able to tell the difference. But it is truly remarkable. Mm -hmm. We had 23 young ladies mm -hmm. uh, graduate on Saturday. Yeah. And one joined us from Zoom, on Zoom from, she was down at Fisk. I think so. Yeah, yeah, she was, or no, Spellman. Spellman. She was. Down she was in Spellman. Atlanta at Spellman, yeah. Yeah. and she was already taking, taking classes, college classes. But she wanted junior. to be part yeah. of yeah. the graduation. So, you know, and we commented on this on Saturday. But the girls, women, looked so good. You know, they get they get blazers with the Montgomery County emblem on it, and. Um, they're just so mature when you think some of them are only sophomores, but because um, it's for 14 to 18. Um, but Carolyn, as you were talking, I mean, we're really hopeful that we're breaking the cycle on so many people. And the woman that spoke uh, that uh, Carolyn mentioned uh, grew up in Youngstown, and um, her mother basically said she was going to amount to nothing. Yeah, she she has worked for. Um, Social Security. Social Security for over 20 years. She's she's a leader there, and she's a basketball coach at Wayne, mm -hmm. a female basketball coach. So her story was so inspiring, and the girls were, you know, all engaged watching her, and she's also a mentor. But um, we can't thank our mentors enough. That was what I was referring to when, when I thank Joyce. She's, and Deb Decker. Yeah, and Deb. Deb. That's right. Deb's and been a Alum mentor as well. And here, but yeah. Alum is a, and who else? Yeah. Anybody I mean, else here? Uh, in our men's program, a lot of our employees yeah. um, have been mentors. And so that's great. And I just want to add about the young men. At the fatherhood banquet, they were escorts. 
they mm-hmm. escorted everybody to their seats and and they're such they have such great manners and it's just I think our program you're right I mean we could we could triple it and still not touch as, as many as we'd like, like but 23 is a pretty good number right yeah so yep. thank you and one thing I noticed they're going to be friends for a long long time mm-hmm. you know you could tell with the mm-hmm. girls that they well we also they each one of them yeah each, each one of them gets a laptop and so that was pretty exciting for yeah, them too sure yeah. yeah our programs commissioners have also become a national example and a model throughout the state mm-hmm. so you know mm-hmm. thanks for your support too it's not often that you get a chance to launch some programs mm-hmm. like this mm-hmm. in government well so thank you and thanks. honestly i don't have it with me but the the cohort wrote a, a oh, creed oh yeah it's, um, i have it and it is something that we it? could all live by and um so it's that that was awesome i mean you can you tell that we were pretty inspired we're pretty impressed. by the whole thing we're not making this up chris will amazing. you tell your team that they did great they did great always they do a great job they, with the do. they do they do they do yep. love marvin so yeah so we should post that because I we that should. was pretty amazing. Yeah, we should. And the young ladies were the ones that brought it. Yep. All right, it's your turn. What you got to say in addition? Well, speaking of young people, um, we have a big event coming up next week, uh, our Youth Leadership Summit. And uh, we haven't had it for a couple of years, but I attended the last one. Mm-hmm. And it was so great to see these young people really excited, uh, learning. Um, we have 350 registered now. Uh, Marvin would like to see, I think, 400. Is that right, Chris? So we have openings, and that's our Youth Leadership Summit. It's July 23rd from 9 to 5, and it's for teens 14 and 16. And um, it, it, we have great speakers and, and you know, leadership that comes in and, and talks. Breakouts. And breakouts. Um, and, it, and it really provides them with resources that they need um, to be resilient, but to also become our next generation of leaders. And um, they'll have sessions on mental health and financial literacy, and it will feature, and I've heard this guy's name, I I meant Saturday to go look him up. He's one of America's top motivational speakers, Jeremy Anderson. Um, And I guess youth just love this guy. So again, that's next Saturday, the 23rd, starting at nine. Right across the street at Sinclair. All right. All right. You have to have a reservation. Mm-hmm. By now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so you can go online. online and yeah. Plenty of places. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, finally, if you have styrofoam, start gathering it and get ready to recycle it because Environmental <laughs> Services Team, Matt, <laughs> is holding its quarterly styrofoam recycling event on this Saturday. This Saturday from nine to one o'clock at Welcome Stadium. Over the past two years, we have collected more than 10,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds of styrofoam, because this is a great way to properly dispose of the material because styrofoam does not break down when it's at the landfill. Mm -hmm. Thanks to our friends at Echo Development, the styrofoam will be processed to become items such as surfboards, picture frames, and much more. Okay, surfboards. We got to get something here, like kayaks. I mean, you know, we're right here. We're talking about the, yeah. the river and all that's going on. Let's yeah. tell them. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> we can add it. Yeah. Well, you know, okay. and the thing about that, Judy and Carolyn, we all three went to the last one in Huber. They were telling us that so this big semi trailer. They said it'll compress down yeah. to like yeah. that much. Yeah. So and it's all air. Yeah. And yep. so we had so many people come to that one. And there's a group in Oakwood. This is what, yeah. I mean, they're constantly um, gathering styrofoam. I mean, if you look yeah. now at what you get usually from Prime or any, anybody, you yep. know, it's got all that styrofoam. And I it's know. like, can we think of something else to use? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's been a week doing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. You that's did. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Flatbox Flat Builder. Flat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, there will be no Montgomery County Commission meeting on Tuesday, July 19th. So our next meeting will be uh, Tuesday, July 26th, 2022 at 1.30 p.m. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved.